What's up? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button already. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. I am super hyped and pumped about this build. I tell you what, I have been killing myself on my wife's fiberglass stratos and that was a humongous build and so much went into it. I mean, it was a complete trash to treasure build. The thing was just in terrible shape and we made the thing into something amazing. It's sick because I get to keep it, I get to use it whenever I want to, but the whole build process was very, very draining. Not only physically, all the work and labor to put into it, but the pocketbook, it just hit me right in the wallet. I mean, that was a lot of money I put into the thing. And you know, now I'm getting on to something else. This is gonna be a brand new well-built uh, 1448, it's a 2022. It came from Backwoods Landing. Um, Backwoods Landing is 11 and a half hours from my house. I had to look it up today just to see how far it was. It's in Alabama and it is a hike. This is like the third brand new boat. The second one in the past year that somebody has brought to me straight from there. I mean, without doing any mods to it. Now this boat right here, it actually belongs to a buddy of mine named Billy Elliott. He's a local fisherman. He fishes a lot of the Suffolk Lakes tournaments and the local bass tournaments. He's a pretty good angler. And this is a perfect example of what you should and shouldn't get. The first time I ever met him, he hit me up on Facebook and he, he wanted to stop by and let me check out his rig. I think he had a 1436 Tracker Topper. The thing is riveted, it's very light, it's very thin. Uh, I just, I don't like those boats. I hate them, to be honest with you. I did do some work for him though. I told him the first time I met him, I said, bro, sell this boat, put that money aside, save some money and buy the boat you want. You know, it's just so much that goes into one of these builds. I tell guys, you need to start with a welded hull. Well, he learned a hard lesson, but now he is in a position where he is going to have one badass boat and it's going to be built completely to his customs, liking, whatever he wants is what's going into this rig. Not only is the boat brand new, but everything going into it is brand new. It's gonna be sick. He's got a bunch of lithium batteries. He's got a brand new Minn Kota Fortrex 80 pound thrust trolling motor that's going on this thing. He's got an older Yamaha two stroke 9915 conversion, but those motors are hot. I like those motors. I know a lot about them. So I'm not gonna hate on it for that because those motors are sick. It's still gonna be quick. It may not be as fast as the new Suzuki's or the Tahatsu's, but this thing's still gonna haul ass. It's gonna be a badass rig. I'm excited about building this. I need to get back to the aluminum and the welding, the fabrication work, because that's, that's who I am. That's what I do. So the whole fiberglass build, was just a total different beast to me. I've built out a couple of fiberglass boats. They were all for myself, my personal rigs. I'm not gonna build your fiberglass boat. I don't care what you want or how much money you got. I don't want to deal with it. That's not me. So you can take that down the road. But this, this is what it's all about to me. I'm gonna build this boat. This thing is gonna be sick. It's gonna be way, way over the top. Now, I wanna tell you this. This guy, Billy, he is actually a professional painter. Mind blown, that's exactly what we need because I hate painting more than anybody else probably that's watching this video right now. It is not fun, all the prep work sucks. So he's gonna be doing the painting on this boat. He's already painted some of the parts for it. He painted the foot pedal tray and this thing is sick. I'm gonna put it right up here in the corner so you can see it. Wow, there's your colorway. So you got your colorway. This thing's like an electric green. It's going to be crazy. I mean, the quality in this paint job, it's, beyond imaginable this dude has been painting his entire life and he is amazing at it so i'm pumped about that because i really don't want to paint anything on this boat um the turf color he's already picked out the turf color the turf is dope i'm going to show you guys that too right up here in the corner yes this is a purple marble hydro turf it's just a brushed finish the thing is going to be so sick and he's got a, a whole theme build for the thing. It's right up my alley. I am all about this build and I just can't wait to get to work on it. He had already installed the trolling motor and the batteries and put the outboard on the back just because he, he, it was brand new. He wanted to take the thing out and run around. I don't blame him. He wanted to use it just to try. He spent a lot of money on it. The dude drove 24 hours there and back to go get the boat. So yeah, he wanted to use it. 
So I gotta take some of this stuff out. I gotta strip the thing down to a bare hole so I can figure out my layout, what I'm gonna put into the boat, and how everything's gonna fit as every piece of the puzzle. Now, a lot of times I just have a general idea. I'm not gonna sit here and draw a whole blueprint and you know map it out. I'm just gonna say, hey, you know, we need a live well. He's a tournament fisher, he needs storage. He needs to have you know, a cover over his gas tank. He needs to have a place to put his batteries. He needs backseat boater storage. He needs to have storage for his tackle and for his rain gear. And I know what they need. I like to build this thing as I go. And that's just who I am. I have the ability to do that. I can literally just frame it. And as I get to a point, if I need a piece, I will go cut it, bend it, make it. If I need a specific hatch, it doesn't matter if it's square or not, I can make it. And that's the beauty of the beast. I'm ready to get into this thing. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, so you see what we got here. This is a brand new 2022 1448 well built. It's got a brand new custom made trailer from Backwoods Landing. The only issue I hate about these trailers, I wish they would just get them galvanized because this paint's not gonna last. It doesn't matter where you take it out, if it's just fresh water, whatever, it's never gonna last. This boat is sick. It's brand spanking new. I mean, this thing is literally only like less than a month old. I mean, look at this. This thing is super fresh. I am so excited about building this. This is basically like an artist's dream, a fresh canvas, brand new, everything on is untouched. The entire boat is set up perfectly. It has nothing in it. It just has a back bench and the front deck and there's no live well. A lot of these things come with a side live well and it's just stupid. Nobody wants to put their live well on the side and the ones that they sell, they put in here, they're small and they're not insulated. It's just, it's crap. If you're a tournament fisherman, those things are not going to do what you need them to do. So Billy Elliot, big props to you dog. You did a killer job by bringing me this hole. This is what I want to build right now and I'm going to trick this thing out to the max. Let's take a look at what we got here though. So this motor right here, he just purchased this motor from another local fisherman and this thing is sick. I mean, it's got a lot of potential. It's a little beat up and scratched up, but I'm pretty sure this thing more than likely is gonna end up getting a paint job with some new decals on it. This is like a 1999, uh, Yamaha two-stroke 15 horsepower upgraded 99 and these things are sick I mean it only weighs like 87 pounds so it's like 50 pounds lighter than the Suzuki's and the Tahatsu motors that are three thousand dollars I think you got this for like twelve hundred bucks I like these motors I really know a lot about them I can take this entire motor apart and put it back together probably with my eyes closed anyways this thing's gonna have a lot of torque. I guarantee you this boat is probably gonna run 22 to 26 miles an hour, even once I'm done building it and putting all the metal where I'm gonna put in here. This thing's gonna be dope. So, as you can see, he's got these uh, ion batteries in here. There's two of them installed already. I've got a brand new one sitting on the floor. I literally have like four boxes that are probably half the size of this boat sitting on the floor over here. I mean, look at all this crap I got. There is stuff all over the place. He brought me all kinds of goodies to put in this boat and I've already got a bunch of stuff I'm gonna put in here too. But as far as this front deck goes, this trolling motor, he installed it up here. It came with a bracket on the side and I, I wish he wouldn't have got that, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna end up cutting this off. I'm gonna have to cut to this whole weld right here, this long ass caterpillar weld. I'm gonna take this thing off. I'm gonna probably use the same piece. I'm gonna relocate this on the front bow of the boat. And I'm gonna put this thing kicked off at an angle so it deploys right in the center of the boat. Now, I'm gonna clean that up and it'll, you won't even know that it was there. But I'm gonna put his recessed foot pedal tray, which you just saw in there. He's gonna have a nice dual graph bridge. He's gonna be sick. I'm probably gonna bring this front deck back at least one, two and a half floor ribs. So you're talking about like a four foot deck extension. Maybe a little more, I don't know. I gotta figure it out and figure out how much room we have. And then he's gonna have some side panels in here on either side. And then the back deck, we're gonna end up doing the normal deal we normally do. It's gonna have you know the seat pedestal base in the center and a big hatch on either side of that. And it's gonna have another hatch in the back that opens up where you can get to your gas tank and some more storage on either side of that. This thing is going to be set up perfectly. It's literally gonna be, any and everything you could ever need in a 14 foot John boat. I'm gonna take this motor off. 
I'm gonna build a jack plate for this. I need to get this thing out the way. I need room in here to make all the magic happen. So I gotta get this off of here. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take these batteries out of here. I'm gonna take this trolling motor off. And I'm gonna start cutting off that bracket that the trolling motor is mounted to. Then I'm gonna try to figure out my layout for this whole front deck and start framing this thing out. Let's get back to work. All right, so I got everything removed out of the boat. This is how the boat came directly from Wellbuilt. Now you can order these boats, customize any way you want them. The problem with getting them customized from Wellbuilt is the products they put in here, they're subpar. They're all like factory stamp molds. They're gonna have the side panels all the way up to the gunnels. They're gonna put your floor in here. It's gonna be made out of like 080 or 116th aluminum diamond plate. All the hatches they put in here, they're crap. They are not gonna hold up. They weld them solid on the top, so it makes it almost impossible for someone to cut them out and replace them with something that's better than what they put in there because the stuff they put in there just doesn't last. It doesn't hold up. I don't wanna hate on them. I love their holes. I hate the interior work they put into the boats, but this is a perfect candidate. I'm gonna trick this thing out. It's gonna look so sick when I'm done. I'm gonna get right into this build. It's time for me to get back to work. All right, so as you guys just saw, I brought in a bunch of aluminum extrusions and I put them in the boat. This is all material that I'm gonna use to frame out this entire boat. This is all stuff that I sell. It's really not that expensive. I sell it by the foot. All the prices are listed on my website at tricktennisjohnboats.com. Now, right here, we've got some one and a half by one and a half by one eighth inch aluminum angle. This second bundle has a bunch of one by three by one sixteenth and some one by two by one sixteenth rectangular tubing. I'm gonna do something a little bit different with this build. I'm gonna leave an itemized list in the description and show you guys exactly how much square footage I use and how much I can sell it to you for so you can follow along and you can figure out exactly how much it would cost you to build your own boat and how much you would need to build your own boat. So the first thing I gotta do is these ribs in here, all these side ribs, we got one, two, three, four on either side. So we got eight side ribs we gotta cut down. Now, if you can look at this, you can see they stick well up above the deck here and there. So I'm going to lay a straight edge from the front deck to the back deck. I'm gonna mark these off. I'm gonna well below those. This is the only part if you want to build a well built and really get everything flush and streamlined, you're gonna have to involve a welder in this stage of the game. I'd be happy to help you out. If I'm not in your local area, then you can show your welder this video and ex I'm gonna explain exactly how I do it. And it's very, very simple. But I'm gonna weld these ribs you know, down another two inches and then I'm gonna cut off the top of them because they stick up above the decks and we're gonna have this whole thing looking streamlined. And I know what you're thinking, this is a brand new boat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cutting wheel to it, I'm gonna cut this thing to pieces because that's what I do. I'm gonna take this piece of angle, I'm gonna lay it up here, across the front deck to back deck. Push it right up tight against these ribs. I'm gonna take a Sharpie marker. I'm gonna mark these. I'm actually gonna angle my marker down a little bit so I can get like a half inch below the streamline that's gonna need to be up here because I'm gonna run some pieces across here and it needs to be lower than the front and back deck. It's pretty simple though. I'm just gonna lay it off. All right, so what I did here is I went ahead and hit all these up with a drill with a wire wheel on it. I had to clean the paint off. Obviously it's gotta be clean if you're gonna weld it. I did all four of these ribs on this side right here. And I've got a clamp on here that reaches over and holds this tight. Cause what's gonna happen is when you heat it up, it's gonna wanna pull away. With the clamp on here, it will keep that from happening. I'm gonna weld this basically from the bottom up to where this cutoff line is. Then I'm gonna come back and cut through these wells and pry that piece off and get rid of it. Now, 
This boat in particular with this trailer, it has these guide bunks on here. So these guide bunks were too tight. So what I did was I literally just picked it up. I picked it up with one hand, this boat's light. I just shoved this two by four underneath. And this is actually like a three and a half by six. I don't know what it is. It's leftover I had off of the Stratos build on the bunks. I just shoved it underneath the bunk boards and basically brought this whole boat up high enough to where I can get a clamp on here. Cause this was actually down here and it was not in an area where I could get a clamp on it. So I'm gonna weld these up, then we'll come back and cut these off. Before I do that, I wanted to show you guys this. A sick little Miller Diversion 180. Um, if you guys have been following the channel for a minute, then obviously you know that my house got struck by lightning a couple months ago. It was like back in late July, early August sometime. And it fried my welder and all the other appliances in my house, electronics. It was a nightmare, but this is kind of the silver lining. I did get this brand new Miller Diversion 180. The one I used for years was a Miller Diversion 165. And that thing was a beast. I probably built 50 boats for that thing, but I've got a brand new one now, and this is gonna be the first job I do with it. I'm really excited about this thing. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse. I'm gonna get back to work. Wow, this welder is amazing. And you see what I did here? I just welded all these ribs right below my lines. And my welds look way better than those factory welds that are up there. I mean, it's just, it's gonna be sick, man. I cannot believe how nice this welder is that I got though. As you can see, it did burn through a little bit on the back, but that doesn't really matter. It's just paint that got heat it up so we're gonna end up sanding this thing down and painting the entire hull i'm not gonna paint it billy's gonna paint it and he's gonna do a hell of a job on this thing but now that all this side is welded i'm gonna come back i'm gonna cut these off right across this line right here all the way down i'm gonna remove this top section plop them off and then i'm gonna start framing this thing i'm gonna do the same thing on the other side i'm gonna put you all in the time lapse for that i just wanted to explain exactly what i'm doing and how i'm doing it Let's get back to work. All right, so I got all the ribs welded and I'll tell you that freaking welder, the thing is amazing. That thing's gonna make me a ton of money and I'm gonna build all kinds of parts of that thing with you guys. But now I'm gonna show you how easy it really is to cut the top of this rib off. I'm gonna show you this in live time. Just so you can see, it only takes me about five to 10 seconds to cut this thing off. That's simple.
All right, so all the side panels are cut down. If you guys are squeamish about me cutting into a new boat or using a cutting wheel, you don't wanna watch my channel. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh my God, he just cut down the main supports of the boat. Yes, I did. Um, it wasn't a big deal. I cut two and a half inches off of them. I do this all the time. This boat is gonna be perfectly fine. When I get done putting all this framing in here and it's all welded in place, it's gonna be a thousand times stronger than it ever was with that two and a half inch rib on the side. So if you wanna comment about that, feel free. I'm not gonna to respond to you though because I just don't have time for that crap. This boat is gonna be sick. I'm getting ready to figure out the layout now. I literally just got off the phone with Billy, um, kicking around the idea of how we wanna put you know, the side panels and just have the storage compartments. And like I said, I like to run, you know, with the build and figure it out as I go. I gotta have a little bit of a plan though. So I was thinking about putting a rod locker in here. People always ask me, why don't you put a rod locker in your boat? Well, I can tell you why. This is my take on the whole rod locker thing. Now I've seen these guys bass fishing. I don't do a ton of bass fishing, but you see their boat and they got like 10 rods out on the deck the whole time they're out there so if i build you a rod locker when are you going to put your rods in the rod locker you're going to put them in the rod locker while you're trailering the boat because i don't understand the whole point of it because once you get out there they take every rod out of the rod locker and put them on the damn deck and then you have a big gigantic rod locker that's taking up half your boat half the storage you could have there's nothing in it I mean, the only reason it would really come in handy is if you're gonna leave all your rods in your boat all the time when it's parked. But a lot of these guys don't do that. These guys fish with thousand dollar reel combos. They're not gonna leave their rods in their boat all the time. A lot of them have nice racks for them. They take them out, they clean them, they check them the night before the tournament. So I like the idea of a rod locker. I think it's sick, but in the overall gist of things, Personally, I really don't think that it's that necessary. And the amount of space that you lose in the boat with the rod locker, it's not a good give and take, my personal opinion. Either way, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna go with this thing. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get a couple pieces of angle, run them from the front deck to the back deck. I'm just gonna try to stage this thing up. I have a couple of extra hatches. They were ones that were made the wrong size or accidentally duplicated. But the bottom line is, I'm gonna try to figure out how I'm gonna lay this thing out and get a general idea, because tomorrow is Friday and I'm gonna work on this boat this weekend. I'd like to make the hatch frames just so I know all my sizing is correct on all the hatches. I'll come back later and make all the lids and attach the hinges and all that type of stuff. So I'm gonna put you guys on the time lapse. I'm gonna try to lay this thing out and get a general idea of what we're doing. Let's get back to work. So I put these hatches in here. This one that I had for the back deck, this was one that I built for a customer. I made it two inches short. I remember this one because I just got this one back in the mail. It actually fits perfect. This is going to be his back deck hatch. Obviously I'm gonna frame it out and stuff, but I mean, it's exactly what I need. So I'm gonna use that here. That's definitely gonna go there. Now, I just ran these angles up here just so I can try to figure this thing out. Obviously, I'm going to have a floor space in here that's open. I'm gonna run some side panels on the side. Just looking at this area though, that's what made me think about doing the rod locker because I have only done one rod locker and that was in Neptune. And personally, I didn't even want to do that rod locker in there, but I wanted that boat to be, you know, all out and crazy. It's definitely cool. It was a pain in the ass. It took up the entire front deck and it made running wires and everything else insanely hard especially since it's almost nine feet long anyways let's get back to this build so what i'm doing now i'm gonna have this hatch i think i'm gonna be able to use that one i'm gonna put that up in the front and that's gonna be his big storage hatch now this is a pretty good size storage hatch right here i mean that will give him access to the entire front deck right here all the way from one side to the other if we don't do a rod locker if we do a rod locker then he's gonna lose about a foot on the side um, I don't know. I got a lot to think about. The live well is going to go right here. That's where I want to put the live well. Um, it's kind of crappy because you only have 10 and a half inches from this uh, floor rib right here to the bottom of the hatch. And the live well needs to be deeper than that. So either I make it skinny where it'll drop down in here, which I don't really want to do that either because it's only going to be able to be 11 inches wide then. 
and I'd like to make my live well at least 12. Usually I try to make them like 14. I have not lost a fish in a live well I've built and I don't want to start losing fish. I'm thinking about some other stuff which I've done and I might actually cut one of these ribs down. I might take and cut this rib in half and basically I can take that same piece that I cut out a lot of times I can flip it around, that way it has an indent, and it will allow the live well to drop down in there. I'd like to put a 14 inch wide by 12 inch tall live well in here. I'm probably like 30 inches long or something like that. It'll probably give you about 18 gallons or somewhere in that range, which is good to keep your fish alive, especially if you got five big boys. I asked Billy his opinion on everything, and he told me point blank, he doesn't care. Do whatever I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna do some more figuring and playing around with this. I really wanna get some of these parts made so that I can work on it this weekend and have what I need. I don't wanna go back and forth to the shop. It's not that far, but it's gonna take me an hour by the time I get in my car and drive there and come back. Even longer if I gotta make stuff. This video is getting kinda of long anyway, so I'm probably gonna have to call this one here. All right, now I know I did a lot of talking in this video. They're not all gonna be like that. This is episode one. This whole series build is gonna be long. It's gonna be at least like eight episodes at a minimum. And this video is almost 30 minutes long. There's a lot that's going into this. I gave you guys a lot of information. The main thing I wanted to highlight was how I do those side ribs, because that's a very important stage if you plan on building one of these boats and you want it to look clean and streamlined around the entire deck. I've got to figure out exactly how I'm going to lay this deck out tonight, or at least 90% of it, so I can make these hatches and frame out this whole front deck. I'm trying to keep you guys up to date with me. These videos are dropping damn near in live time. They're going to be a day, maybe two days behind schedule of where I'm actually at with the boat. I really appreciate you guys watching. It would mean a lot to me if you would hit that like, share, subscribe button. I'm trying to grow the channel. I really want this thing to blow up. It would be amazing if I woke up tomorrow and I had 10,000 subscribers. It's not gonna happen, but we're gonna get there before you know it. And that's just gonna be a stepping stone. I gotta get back to work.